Hello. If you're here, say hello. Hi, Diana. It's so good to be back here. It really does feel like um, like coming home. So we're just going to give everybody a few minutes to find me and hop on. I am actually going to, I'm going to flip through, this is my illustrating Bible. So I will flip through this while we wait for everyone to join us. There's still tons and tons of pages that need to be done in here. There's still a lot, a lot that needs to be done. So. Hi, Karen. Hello, Angela. So if I miss you and I don't greet you, I'm sorry. Sometimes um, the comments go quite fast. So we're just flipping through. We're having having a little look-see. I know I love looking at other people's Bibles and seeing what they've done. So I'm just doing a flip through for you ladies while we wait for everyone to join me. So these are some of the pages. The fun thing with the illustrating Bibles is that they have the the ring bound feature which means you can i like to add bulk <laughs> so that means you can get quite bulky with them whereas the bibles with the traditional binding i'll actually show you this is my new king james journal the word so it's got a traditional binding and if i don't put the elastic on it doesn't stay closed anymore <laughs> but i love both sizes i really do um Hi Jessica. Um, Angela, I used a combination of um, scrapbooking paper, I used a napkin, I used some watercolour paints, I used a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, I apologise if I sound a bit croaky today. I am feeling a little croaky. I have, I have water here. I also have water for my paint, so note to self, do not drink your paint water and don't dip your brushes in your drinking water. I need to, I need to label them. Hi Bev. So we're just flipping through. Oh, we're, we're there. So Leviticus, if you guys are looking for it, it's right near the beginning. It is one of the first five books of the Old Testament. Um... We are going to Leviticus chapter 17. And I actually did prep my page with a layer of clear gesso. So you might see this the page on this side is a little shinier than this page. That is because I have already prepped it. I used, uh, let me show you what I used. Creative Talents Clear Primer. So this is a local product here in South Africa. Sorry, ladies. But any clear gesso will do you if you're going to be using lots of stuff like I will be today. Hi, Robin. Hello, Betty. Okay, so I am going to move this out the way for a minute because I actually want to read our scripture to you. And we are in Leviticus chapter 17. So we're going to be reading. But before we do that, I always feel that um, whenever we come to the Word of God, whether it's for study or for creative reasons, uh, we do so with the right heart. So if we can all just um, close our eyes and bow our hearts. Lord, we just come to you today and we thank you so much for the precious life that you have given us. We thank you, Father, for, for the power of the life that we can have in Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that as we gather today in your name, that we gather in unity, we gather in love, and that we gather to lift you up and that we do everything that we do today to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. And all God's children said, amen. <laughs> so let us go to Leviticus. So I am... Um, I know it's been a while since I've been here on this group doing a live, but most of you, I think, know I always encourage you to not just 
pluck a scripture out and go and journal it, but to have a look at it at a whole, have a look at it in context, to get an idea of what was going on, because that is the best way to study and read and understand the scriptures is in context. We never want to just take something out of context. So we're reading chapter 17 and the key verse is verse 14. It says, since the life of every creature is its blood. I have told the Israelites, you are not to eat the blood of any creature because the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it must be cut off. So what is going on here? So this is during a time where um, God is busy sort of creating his covenant with the Israelites. He is sort of giving them their laws. He's giving them their practices. He's explaining to them. He's laying foundation with his people. And in the laying of this foundation of his covenant with his people, he tells them not to eat animals with blood in. And he says, his reason he gives here specifically is, since the life of every creature is in its blood. So we're going to chat a little bit um, today about blood, um, life in the blood, why blood. <laughs> we're going to be chatting a bit about blood. Now, if, um, if for any reason you have already <laughs> journaled Leviticus 17, you can also journal in Deuteronomy 12, 23. So that's Deuteronomy 12, 23. And it's pretty much saying the same thing. So let me just go there for you quickly. I didn't mark it. I should have. Let's see. Deuteronomy 12, uh, 23. But don't eat the blood since the blood is the life. And you must not eat the life with the meat. So there we see that same idea of the life is in the blood. If you've journaled in Deuteronomy 12, 23, you can also journal in Hebrews chapter 10. And that's Hebrews 10 verses 1 to 11. And I'm going to fast forward to Hebrews and kind of again in context so we've read the scripture in context in Leviticus in context within the Bible or scripture as a whole this was a foreshadowing or God preparing his people for the perfect sacrifice that Jesus was going to make and we read about it here obviously in the whole scripture but specifically here in Hebrews chapter 10 so I'm going to read to you chapter 10, verses 1 to 11, because really we don't really get the full meaning of life is in the blood that's mentioned in the Old Testament until we get to the New Testament and we understand where God was going with us. Um, so let's have a look. Since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the reality itself of those things, it can never perfect the worshippers by the same sacrifices they continually offer year after year. Otherwise, wouldn't they have stopped being offered since the worshippers, purified once and for all, would no longer have any consciousness of sins. But in the sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year after year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, as he was coming into the world, he said, you did not desire sacrifice and offering, but you prepared a body for me. You did not delight in whole burnt offerings and sin offerings. Then I said, see, it is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. After he says above, you did not desire or delight in sacrifices and offerings, whole burnt offerings and sin offerings, which are offered according to the law. He then says, see, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Every priest stands day after day, ministering and offering the same sacrifices time after time, which can never take away sins. But this man, after, after offering one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So we can see, we sort of 
fast forward through the scriptures into Hebrews and we see where God was going with this idea of he was teaching them back then already in Leviticus that the life is in the blood. And that's what it was actually all about. So we'll chat about some, some of this as we journal, but let's get to journaling. But I just wanted to give you sort of a rough overview of what we're doing and why. <laughs> why this, this strange scripture about blood and life and animals. And so because this page is in the beginning of my, my Bible and because this is ring bound, I'm just going to flip some of this round just to give myself a more even surface to work on. There we go. Now, obviously, you can't do this with the traditional bound Bible, but what you can do is you just slide another book underneath. So just, just to show you what I mean. So if you are journaling in a Bible like this and you're here in Leviticus, so it's kind of weird if it's down at an angle like that then you will just take another book or diary or something similar in size and just pop that underneath. Let's just move this so you can see. And then again, you would have an even surface. So there's just a little tip since we are doing tips and tricks. <laughs> That's where we are. Thank you, Diana, for, for posting the verses. I have a couple of notes. Um, I just made a few notes, but I'll post a picture of my notes as well when I'm done with the live for anyone who wants to to go have a look at them. Hi Mari, hi Corin. Hello Johanna. So the principle we're using is in the file section. It's called Covenant. It's just a one pager so if you go to the file section you will find it there. This is the principle we're using and I chose this because I love the idea of the way these hearts are dripping into the cup. And that made me think of covenants, of the cup of sacrifice, the hearts. The color of the hearts made me think of the drops of blood. So I didn't just, I mean, I did pick a pretty picture, but I didn't just pick a pretty picture. It was a whole lot in terms of offering and sacrifice and the cup of covenant and the blood with this whole image is coming from. So I'm going to use that, but I'm going to do a little bit of a mixed media background on my page first. So step one, we're going to cover our key verse with some washi tape so that stays highlighted. So remember, if you're putting washi tape on the page, just get some of the stickiness off first by rubbing it on the back of your hand so that you don't tear your page when you pull it off. Uh, the life of every creature since it's blood. There we go. Okay, so that is covered. Now, what I did was I actually chose a couple of washi tapes that I uh, felt kind of went nicely with. I picked out the reds and the sort of gray colors. So I picked out a few washi tapes and I am going to do a little bit of a washi wall. So you'll see what that is in a minute as I start with that. So I'm just going to take... And if you are like me and you have a little bit of a problem with collecting washi, well, it's not a problem. I just really like washi and you have lots of it. And then you end up like not knowing how to use it all. This is a fun technique for using your washi. So I'm starting at the top of the page and I am going to be laying my washi down in strips. Let's actually put some more. Now I'm going to be covering my text a little and I know that can be a bit of a controversial topic. I used this particular Bible for my artwork. You saw the Bible that I read out of, that's my She Reads Truth Bible. That's the Bible that I use for reading and studying. So it's purely a personal preference. I don't feel there is a right or wrong in terms of journaling over the whole page or just in the margin. It really is what's between you and the Lord. 
that well at least that's how I feel <laughs> so I am just sticking some of this down I'm using different lengths and kind of just randomly spacing it so let's use some of this one this one's got a lot of red in it Hi Debbie, I'm glad you could join us. I kind of don't want them all to be ending at the same point. So let's see, yeah, there we go. I want them all to end at different heights. That just creates visual interest. There's no like specific reason for it. Um, just creates some visual interest there. Now, I can always take a pair of scissors when I'm done and just trim those neatly. So I'm not worrying about those too much. This one is a much darker red. So I think most of us have heard that saying at some point in time that blood is thicker than water. Um, hands up if you've heard that. So... Interestingly enough, there's a little bit of debate as to where this originates, but I actually read something the other day, and that's what got me thinking about it, that says that it, it does actually originate, the original sort of, the full saying, if you want to put it that way, was that the blood of the covenant is thicker than the waters of the womb. And that was... Apparently, just one, there's a few different sort of um, opinions as to where the phrase originates. But that was one of them. And I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, in, in that particular phrase, um, they kind of, they say that it was relating to wartime and specifically soldiers who had fought and bled together on the battlefield. Um, so that's kind of where they say that comes from. But... You know, I kind of feel that it also has a lot of, of biblical ramifications, if we think about it, that the blood of the covenant, I mean, that is something that God teaches us from the Old Testament already, how the blood of the covenant is thicker than the waters of the womb. So that's just one of those little fun facts. <laughs> But that's, yeah, that's where they, apparently, where the saying, blood is thicker than water, comes from. So you can see I'm overlapping some of them as well. So I don't want them all exactly the same width. I want different widths here. Uh, but I have another one. Where did it go? Sorry, ladies, I'm just looking for it. There we go. Found it. <laughs> Okay, and I am also maybe just a little bit obsessed with floral washies in particular. But florals are so pretty, right? So let's put that there. And maybe another one of these. So now we have our washi wool and I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim at the top. if I emailed it to you I'm pretty sure you can access your emails on your phone maybe it would allow you to do that so let me know because then I can email you the principle we'll see if that works maybe it's just the downloads of Facebook that it doesn't want to do hi Sherry so Sherry we are journaling in Leviticus Chapter 17, verse 11, and we're talking about blood. <laughs> so 
So there we have our washi wall. So now I'm not going to leave it at that. I am going to use a stencil and some texture paste. And what I'm going to be doing is, oh, and where did it go? Here we go. So this is the texture paste I'm using. So it's just a smooth texture paste. Um, so you can use any texture paste you've got. It doesn't have to be this particular brand. But it's just a plain smooth texture paste and I'm going to run it through a stencil and you'll see how that kind of just breaks up and knocks back the sort of this washi wall. And you can use any stencil so I'm really just looking for a stencil that's got kind of um, mixed background and patterns I don't want anything too specific so I thought this stencil kind of lends itself really well to that and I'm going to just move it around a little so you can see how that just breaks up that washi tape just a little bit Now when you're working with your texture paste and a stencil, try not to like squeeze too hard into it, but rather use a lot of paste and less pressure and you'll find you'll get a nice even sort of distribution through your stencil. Oh, and one of the fun things about putting gesso on your page before you start is if you have little bits that you don't like, you can wipe them up straight away. ta see? And hmm, kind of, you know what, I want to turn it around a bit. So do a little bit more. Get some of that in there. stencils and texture paste. I don't know why, but I just do. Okay, now the other thing is you need to have, if you're doing a video like me, a bowl of water nearby that you can quickly dunk that into. If you're not doing a video, you can just run to the bathroom and quickly rinse your stencil because the texture paste does dry quite fast and if it dries on your stencil it's actually going to get into all the little grooves and it makes it very difficult to use the stencil again. You will ruin your stencil. So just dunk it in some water that way it stays damp and when I'm finished I can go and wipe it clean because the texture paste has stayed damp and soft. Oh Debbie it says your printer is not connected. Oh goodness. Oh gosh. Okay. That's not good. So I am going to dry this off a little bit with my heat tool so that you guys don't have to sit and watch paint dry on my page. Let's just do that. So I so apologize for the noise. So unfortunately with the texture paste, it needs to be really dry. It does take, obviously, just a little bit longer, depending on how thick you've made it. Just 
little bit more. Sorry for all the noise, but I think that, I think I did it. Okay. So we are ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be adding some color. Let me just grab that. I'm going to be using watercolors. You can use pretty much anything you have, but I thought I would go with watercolors. So let me grab a brush and... Kind of looking for a nice big fluffy fluffy brush. Paint water, not drinking water. And I'm going to start by adding some color. And I'm literally splashing because that's a word, it's a technical term. It's splashing. I am splashing <laughs> color onto the page. So you can see it's really just like plopping. There's another word, splashing and plopping color onto the page. So don't overthink it. We're just adding bits of color to the page. Well, let's just put, if you have a, a plastic sheet or a craft mat or something and you want to put it under. I'm going to work along the edges now. So this scripture that talks about the blood, right? Well, yes, God is telling them at this point in time in the Old Testament not to eat animals that still have their blood in them and he says to them the reason he tells them is because the life is in the blood so what is this all about does it mean that we now shouldn't be eating uh, burgers or steaks that haven't first been drained of their blood okay so let's let's see what's going on the animals that the israelites ate god was creating a covenant with them and he was teaching them about covenant covenant and about sacrifice and he was teaching them how the blood sacrifice covers sin so they would take the animal to the temple first where they would drain it of blood on the altar and that blood was offered up as a sacrifice to to the lord and the blood also was a sacrifice on their part for their sins so this is what because the life is in the blood. That is why they were sacrificing the blood and not the flesh or the meat of the animal. And I mean, this was something that God told the Israelites thousands of years before modern science realized the truth of the statement, the life is in the blood. So if you go and you, if you want to go and research it and look it up a bit, modern science can now prove that blood is essential for life. Without blood, there's no life. You take the blood out of the body, the body dies. Blood is what carries all the nutrients through the bodies. It carries the hormones. It carries all the information. It's all done through the blood. So the blood is what carries the life. So God is telling them that it is the life that's found in the blood that becomes a substitute for their sins, for their life. And he's doing this all in preparation for when Christ becomes that ultimate sacrifice. So that is kind of what's going on here. So there was also obviously, especially in the context and in the day, there were some hygiene reasons for, for this as well, because I mean, again, modern science now, we, we know how many diseases and problems are, are carried specifically via the blood. And so for hygiene purposes, because remember they were, um, they were like a nomadic people. So they didn't have what we had now. They didn't have the hygiene we had now. So this was all part of the process of protecting them, keeping them healthy, keeping them safe. 
Another reason why um, would be because when they took the, oh, you can see, by the way, I'm just mixing reds and yellows and throwing it on the page. So another thing would be when they took the sacrifice to the priests, right? And they offered the blood, they would then take the meat and they would go and eat the meat. And obviously not always, sometimes the whole thing, but a lot of the cases, you know, they would first pour out the blood so that they could then eat the meat. So in a way it was like, a symbol of the, that fellowship that they were having with God because they would offer a part, offer it, and then get a part of it back so that as they ate, it was like they were eating something that they had first offered to God. So it was something, in a way, they were communing with God, having fellowship with Him. So it was a, this constant reminder every time they ate of the need that they had to fellowship with the Lord. So, you know... God is teaching them here about fellowship, about covenants, and also that the blood is the symbol of life needed to be treated with honor. So it was vital and important because it was the percusor of Christ's blood. It was the forerunner of that. So he was teaching them here already to treat it with honor. So that is also why they were forbidden to eat the meat with the blood still in it, because Consuming the blood would have violated that sacred act of atonement by which they were being made right with God through the sacrifice of that blood. So, you know, the blood would then have, eating the blood would have disregarded its divinely ordained purpose in that setting as that sacrifice, that sacrificial offering for their sin. So this is, it's a lot, it's a lot to absorb, but... That is why it's important that we go and we we read in context, we see what's what's going on. And you know, something that I find really fascinating is that modern science today cannot make or manufacture blood. Right? That's why we have to donate blood, because scientists can't make it. It's not something that humans are able to make. Not blood that can give life. We can't do it. And I this is now entirely Charlene's opinion. <laughs> this is not, not what it says here. But I believe that there's definitely a spiritual element to blood. That blood is more than just physical. There's, there's definitely a spiritual element that God brings to blood. And that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> um, you know, sort of physically... Uh, existence depends on the blood that is in our body to carry all the nutrients to pump keep our heart pumping and all of that but then spiritually our lives depend on the shed blood of Jesus so just that beautiful connections that we can make with the blood so next I'm going to take some white paint I'm actually going to take white gesso purely because my white acrylic paint is finished so this is an acrylic based gesso so it is now serving the purpose of acrylic paints. And I am going to just decan some onto, oh, there we go, on here. And then I'm going to start swiping it. And you can see how it's going to pick up the watercolor and just blend it out. And we can blend it out across our washi wall. So it kind of just knocks the colors back a bit and also just blends everything into each other. I think the, the trick with this is less is more. I'd rather start with less and add than put too much and then feel like, oh, now I've got too much, it's difficult to take it off, just in terms of the paint. So I kind of would say, start with less and build it up. Yeah, so we're going to give that a minute to dry. And while that dries, I'm just going to quickly fussy cut my elements. Exactly, Kay. Exactly. The Lord's Supper. 
where we, we drink the blood. It sounds terrible. <laughs> but again, we look at it in context and we see where it's all coming from. So it was that this Old Testament act of atonement that sort of was pointing forward to the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross in forgiveness for our sins. So fortunately, it's not a lot of fussy cutting. You can see I did give you some different size sizes on the printable. Um, not everyone has a big Bible, not everyone has a small Bible. Some ladies prefer to journal in an art journal. So you do you, do what works for you. So when we, when we get to the New Testament, we see quite a lot of teaching because the New Testament church, this was an issue um, specifically with the, the Jewish Christians um, with regarding, regarding their laws. It was a big issue because they were like, well, we have all these laws and these things that we're supposed to be doing. And they had to sort of learn or be taught that they didn't necessarily have to follow those laws anymore. Um, so if you go back to at the beginning of our session where I read to you from Hebrews 11, he's discussing there how the laws were put in place as a shadow of what was to come, as a preparation, as a temporary arrangement, um, where now it is no longer needed for us to sacrifice animals on an altar it's no longer necessary for us to drain the blood out of an animal before we eat it. But they were also careful to mention, because this was such a hotly debated issue in the New Testament churches, they were also careful to remember that to mention that although these things are now no longer necessary or required because you know we have the freedom of Christ, they also remind us to be sensitive to our brothers and sisters in Christ. So that would be, um, like in in Timothy, Timothy 4 verse 3 and Romans 14, all talk about how these, these laws are no longer necessary, apart from Hebrews 11 that are, 10, sorry, Hebrews 10 that I read to you. But if we look at, I think it's 1 Corinthians, where it basically tells us that you know, although we now have freedom in Christ, we do everything for the glory of God. And we do it with our brothers and sisters in Christ in mind. So, you know, we we don't now try and cause contention or, you know, tell them, no, you have to do it this way or you have to do it that way. So there's kind of that, again, reminded not to use our freedom in Christ as an excuse to do anything we want, but definitely to be considerate of those that were coming out from under the law um, versus those who never grew up with the law. So in other words, you're Jewish and versus your Gentile who were never taught that they didn't have to eat certain foods and the Jewish people that were so used to, you know, only eating certain things and, you know, they realized, um, that they could actually eat anything now. Nothing was technically unclean anymore. Christ had absolved them of everything and all of that, but, but, to take their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ into consideration. And if it upsets them that they eat a certain food, then not to eat that food in front of them. Just that simple. In other words, be considerate. <laughs> Um, Angela? No, I don't. Probably should. <laughs> Before that stays stuck. Thank you.
I was getting like so <laughs> distracted talking about blood and laws and rituals. So just cutting some of these hearts. So these hearts really made me think of drops of blood, you know, into the cup of the covenants. So yes, we may not no longer be under that law because we have been freed from that law by Christ. But it doesn't mean we can just go now, run around, and do whatever we want either, right? Let's just grab some glue. Hopefully some glue will still come out. I think it's almost empty. still some there. I wasn't sure if it, I should have actually checked before I started the video if there was any glue left in here. It's just so beautiful how, as we read through scriptures from the Old Testament to the New, how we see the big picture. You know, the Israelites in this day here in Leviticus that were being given these instructions, they didn't have the big picture. They didn't have the privilege of flipping back to the back of the book, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, to see what this was all about. Where was this going? Um, I think in a lot of ways we are very privileged to be able to see, maybe not necessarily the whole picture, but a lot more of the picture than what these guys had. Hello Iris, I'm glad you could join us. I'm going to dry some of this off with the heat tool, so I'm going to make a racket again. Sorry, ladies. and I'm thinking I could actually put another heart in seeing as how they are more those three hearts are looking very lonely they're very far to fall so let's, let's put another heart in let's put another one one I was looking at it while I was trying and I was like hmm needs another heart <laughs> okay that's 
is dark. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, wait. Let's put one last heart, guys. Promise, last heart. I'm just putting one more heart. I said, I'm a more is more kind of person. I can't help myself. Doing another one of these little... I put one of the little half hearts in. Have it sticking up out of the bowl. Right, okay. Um, Amber, Amber Van Nickerk, she's one of the moderators on admins or moderators on this group. She believes in it's got to be three or five. You can't have an even number in your composition. So there we have one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Okay, Distress Crayon in a black. And I am going to give my little cup something to stand on so it's not floating in thin air, right? So I'm just rubbing the crayon along the bottom of the page. And then I'm going to use this very special blending tool. These two very special blending tools. And I'm just going to blend that out. So by putting this sort of dark bit here at the bottom of the page, you can see how it kind of grounds this. Now this cup is no longer floating. It's sitting on something. Again, start out with less, add more, rather than putting too much and then feeling like, oops, I've overdone it. It's always easier to add more than it is to take away. where we start playing you could technically call it finished or you could keep playing if you're like me you'll keep playing <laughs> so I am just again this is a black stabilo oil pencil so I'm just using this just around some of these pieces to create a little bit of depth and shadow kind of get it standing out just a little bit more from the page so again, we can just blend with our finger. Don't get too much on her fingers. Oops. Okay, so you can see how adding the black edge just kind of lifts it a little bit kind of sets it apart from the background. You can see it's lifting. I don't think I put enough glue. I think my glue is finished. Well, that's okay. We can also just glue it down with a little bit of gesso. Note to self, far more Tombow glue. There we go. That should do it. Stay. So obviously you need quite a bit of glue because I've got so much stuff under here and I've got the different layers with the texture paste. So now this is really up to you how much you want to play with this. Um, if 
you want to sort of keep going or leave it at that. That's the fun part about Bible journaling and art journaling in general, is that you do you. There's no rules. There's no, it must be this way or that way. So I am happy with that. I am going to call it a page. And I just want to actually underline, where is my pen? I want to underline the life is in the blood. stickers on the cup because there's the cup of covenant and it's a blood covenant because the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb <laughs> this, this is my thought process <laughs> does anyone else do that um, okay, please for that since my tumbler seems to be finished. There we go. So let's just put that on there. So ladies, that is the page. I hope you all enjoyed it. I um, hope you all learned something and got something to think about and dig in a little deeper yourselves to find out more about these topics. It's always, I find it interesting to see. I love learning new stuff. <laughs> so there we go, ladies. I hope you all enjoyed it. I am going to, um, I'll post a picture of the page and I will post a picture of my notes for you. But thank you so much for joining me and Diana, thank you again for having me back here at Bible Journaling Tips and Tricks. I love this group. This is like home away from home. So ladies, let's just close with some prayer. Thank you, Father, for the time together. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that right from the start, you had a plan in place to save us. And that all through, through history, you were putting that plan into action so that the day that each one of us were bo was born, there was already a plan in place for our redemption. We thank you so much for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye.